Welcome to the Three Crosses Farrier Company. I'm Caleb, and we're gonna be trimming Lakota today. This is part one. We're going to be doing the front feet in this video. Part two, which will be the back feet, should be coming out in a week or so. Anyone that's new to the channel, we've been doing Lakota for quite a while now, and there's some other videos of us trimming her. I'll have those linked, so you can go watch them at the end of this video. It's spring here and you can see all that beautiful green grass growing up behind us there. I do love spring. It's probably my second favorite season, uh, fall being my first. And there's just something about spring and fresh grass and everything starting to get warm and you got some baby foals running around and baby calves and just it's a wonderful time of year. Gonna get a little bit of mud off there. You'll notice the hooves aren't super distorted. There's some distortion that we'll address, but it's not terrible. We'll clean up the inside. So we hoof pick first. This allows us to see everything within the hoof. Where I'm picking out now is called the sole. Right there where my knife is, is right at the tip of the frog. And those are the commissures. And we want to make sure we clean those out really good. A lot of bacteria and dirt and things gets trapped right in those areas. You'll see the bars that are kind of folded over right there, running towards the heels. Put a little brush on it. You can see that this hoof is absolutely massive. And you can see that she has an extremely healthy frog but she has a very large frog. A lot of that has to do with the fact that this hoof and the other three are holding up almost 2,000 pounds of horse. So we're getting that cleaned out. Where my knife is working, that's the bar. We want to straighten those bars and define them. We don't want to take them all the way out. We just want to define them and get rid of where it's rolled over. That is the seat of the corn right there. And we wanna make sure that we, we get that cleaned out and that there's no pressure there. Can cause a lot of problems if you have pressure on the seat of the corn. I'm using Salcedo knives. In the past, I've used JH Forge knives and they don't stay sharp quite as long as I would like. Uh, these Salcedos though are amazing, super sharp, work really well. I was probably due to sharpen them in this video. They were getting a little dull. Again, cleaning out the commissures, defining my frog a little bit. You don't want to you don't want to take all the frog away. You just want to get rid of the frog that is either dead, not attached. You'll see there's kind of some tags there that are that where the frog is kind of just flopping and hanging. And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to nip I've said this in several videos, I, I harp on it. You need to be able to run your nippers nice and flat. I start in the toe and I work my way to the heel and then I go back to the toe and I work my way to the other heel. The idea is that I get a flat nip line all the way around so that I don't have to work as hard with my rasp. You'll also notice that I'm bringing the heels back. This is super, super important. If you look at where the heel is now, right before I nip into it, it's forward. When I get done nipping, it brings that heel back towards the widest point of the frog. It doesn't bring it all the way back, but we're closer. We don't want that heel slung forward, which is what we call it when the heel grows forward towards the center of the foot. We want that heel back towards the widest point of the frog where it's supporting the whole hoof. Here we're just gonna get the seat of the corn all cleaned out, make sure that there's no sole pressure in there. Also getting all of the dead sole that we can cleaned out. Uh, normally in the wild, horses move enough that rocks and dirt and sand acts as a natural abrasion and helps exfoliate this dead hoof wall. In captivity, horses don't move enough for this process to happen and so as farriers, we do it manually with a hoof knife. Now we're gonna flatten the hoof the rest of the way with our rasp, everything that we couldn't get with our nippers or anything that we didn't get quite flat, we'll use the 
rasp to do. Here I'm gathering up the hoof. So I'm making a mark. So when I go to rasp from the top, I know how far to rasp. We want the hoof wall even and the same width, roughly the same width, all the way around. And this process is often overlooked by farriers. I, I know that I overlooked it for a long time. Um, but by shaping that foot from the bottom, you can see the white line, which mirrors the coffin bone. And so we want to shape the foot to the coffin bone or to the white line. That's where the horse naturally wants to be. If you look here, she's got kind of a flat spot right in that lateral toe or that outside edge, just, just behind the front of the toe. That's where she's breaking over. So when we come from the top now, we can see the mark we made from the bottom and we know exactly how far to rasp without weakening the, the hoof wall or compromising its integrity. So one of the most common comments that I receive is that I'm weakening the hoof wall when I'm rasping the outside or the dorsal wall of the hoof wall. While I could and while it is possible to weaken the hoof wall by rasping too much or dubbing the toe, what I'm doing here does not weaken the hoof wall. When you understand that the white line mirrors the shape of the coffin bone, and that the white line also mirrors the about an inch down from the coronary band, then you'll understand that what I'm doing here is simply bringing the horse back to its natural shape without distortion. Distortion does more to weaken a hoof wall and weaken a horse's hoof in general than almost anything else. So by gathering the foot up and making the hoof wall the same width all the way around, it's natural width, getting rid of the distortions and flares, I'm strengthening the hoof capsule because now the horn wants to grow as it should without distortion. And you can see that I've rasped to my mark and I'm almost all the way to my mark right here. And then I'll put a little bit of a roll all the way around just to make sure that there's no sharp edges that can hit a rock and chip. But you can see now that the hoof wall is straight. The horn is straight. So now it's going to grow straighter than it did before. That's the whole point of this exercise. So now we're going to work on the other hoof. So with, with what we've gone over now, we'll go over a couple other things that we're learning. I was really struggling on this side. We were doing great. Everything was going great. And then the neighbor was shooting. He shot a shotgun. Not sure what was going on. It happens out here in the country, uh, but it spooked Lakota. And so she was kind of on edge for the rest of the trim. In fact, it was kind of the rest of the trim was definitely a struggle. Again, you can see that this hoof has some distortion. You can see where the horn isn't straight, where it's not coming from the coronary band down. And you can kind of see where it's bowed up a little bit on the inside over here, how we've got some distortion on both, both toe quarters. And we're gonna address that. I get some hate because I use Saran Wrap. It's, I like it, it works really well. Um, I've used that wrap. I've used all kinds of other things, but this seems to work pretty well. Again, we start by cleaning up the bottom of the foot, getting the commissures all cleaned up, getting the bars cleaned up so we can see them and work on them. Also, it is easier on your knives. If you get as much dirt out of there as you can, it won't dull your knives up quite as fast. Just looking at the hoof, you can see that the heels are way too far towards the toe. What we, again, what we would call slung forward. You can also see that the bars, which is where my brush was right there, right there, that's a bar, is folded over. So we need to address that. We need to straighten the bars, define them, and then get all these little tags on the frog cleaned up and and out of there.
right here, you, there's a little tag. That is called the center sulcus, right where my knife is there. The thing about being a farrier, one of the most important things that we need to learn is anatomy. Anatomy allows us to get under a horse and know how far we can cut, how deep we can cut, where to cut, because we understand where the bones are laying, where blood supply is, where nerves are. If you truly want to be good at this profession, you have to have a very good understanding of the horse's anatomy. And not just the hoof. You need to understand the bones and how the limb works and how it functions. Otherwise, when you're faced with a problem, you won't know how to proceed. So right here, I'm straightening, straightening the bar. I'll get that all straightened up right there. And you see I'm getting rid of where the bar has rolled over and straightening it up. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not, I'm not uh, taking the bar completely out. I'm just straightening it up. As farriers, one of the places that we can get in a lot of trouble is when we start taking depth. There's a lot of places that we can make mistakes and that you can harm a horse, but one of the biggest ones is taking depth. So when I'm running my knife around on the inside of the sole, so you'll see that line, that white line is what it's called. And you'll see the hoof wall where I'm nipping. And then you see in, in where the frog, and then in front of the frog, and then that where it runs all the inside of the hoof. That is the sole. And if I take too much sole, the horse will be for sure sore. It's the number one mistake that young farriers make is we're so interested in getting a nice shaped clean hoof that we forget that we can't take too much sole. So right here, I'm gonna take out the corn, the seed of the corn right there, but we don't wanna to go too deep. If you go too deep at this point, you can really hurt a horse. And that's one of the things that anatomy helps you is understanding how much you can take, how much you can't take. And then there's a lot of feel. You have to know how the hoof wall feels, what color it is, so that you don't cut the hooves too deep. Again, you'll see she's kind of dancing around on me here. This was after the, the uh, incident and she just was really nervous for the rest of the time. Again, I'm making my mark so that I can see, and you can see where all that distortion is. You can see where the hoof wall isn't the same width. You can see that it's kind of blowed out right in this medial toe quarter. That's because she's breaking over in the lateral toe quarter. That's where her hoof is breaking over, is that flat section right where I'm rasping, uh, just right there. That's, the, that's her breakover point. Right, just to the outside of the toe. Here you can see the flat spot. That's where she's been breaking over. We're not gonna hit it as hard with the rasp because it's not as flared, because she's worn it off. So I would say about 70% of horses break over to the lateral toe quarter. So when we, so like a lot of this, when you're shoeing a horse, when you know certain things, like you know that a lot of them break over to the lateral toe quarter, when we're working on the bottom, all this is inside our mind. So if we were gonna build shoes for her, we're picturing what we were doing while we were trimming and then shaping shoes to fit that. Again, we're not weakening the hoof wall. We're getting rid of distorted horn. Once we get rid of that distorted horn, it's straight, it grows straighter. If we allow it to stay distorted, it's gonna grow distorted. And I, I think a lot of people that aren't used to seeing a draft horse, because draft horses have more distortion than, than probably a lot of other breeds, primarily because of their weight. Drafts have a, a so much weight is coming down on these hooves every day your normal quarter horse is a thousand pounds, maybe maybe twelve hundred on the heavy side. This horse here weighs two thousand, easy. 
that much weight is, go is going to affect the way the hoof grows. You can see here that she is leaning so hard on the hoof stand, which is a testament to Hoof at USA's. They're a tough hoof stand if they can hold up to her putting her full weight like this on, on the stand. But if she doesn't want to keep it on the stand, she won't. I do go back off camera and fix that flare, but this is the end of the video for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll catch you next time.